Hi there, I'm Jim, a solutions engineer with Edge Impulse, and today I've got another uh, synthetic data set generation demo for you. Today we're going to be going through how you can use DAL-E, which is OpenAI's image generation tool based on generative AI techniques, to generate a data set of images without even having to take one yourself. No gloves. And some gloves. Haha. <laughs> First off, I'm going to take you through how you can use OpenAI's API to generate images via Python. And then I'm going to show you a little trick that we have for enterprise customers for integrating this directly into Edge Impulse as a platform using something called transformation blocks. So this notebook is available along with a number of other data set synthesis notebooks from other videos that I've done on the um, Edge Impulse Notebooks GitHub here. And the um, transformation block that we're going to be looking at later is also available publicly here. And both of these will be linked in the description. So back to our notebook. We're going to start off by just installing some local requirements. All you need to run uh, this example is Python, pip, Jupyter Notebooks, and uh, OpenAI itself. And you can even run it in Google Colab if you don't want to run it locally. So just install that. It's already installed. There are three imports that we'll need uh, for the actual code itself. And then these are just for plotting things later. First off, we need to set up our OpenAI API key. And that's done over in uh, OpenAI. You log in. Uh, click visit your API keys, grab your API key, and then set it as a, an environment variable on your machine. You can put it in manually, but it's much safer to keep it in an environment variable. So I've already done that. So when we run this, we should get our open API key set to that environment variable there. Once we've set up our open AI API key, then we can just go ahead and generate an image. And uh, the API just takes in, for image create, takes in a prompt. And in this case, we're going to ask it to generate an image of someone in front of a webcam holding their hands up to show that they've got gloves on. And it's really good to be very descriptive in this kind of situation. So I've been very descriptive here. And I've given it a size of image to generate and a number of images. We should just get one back very quickly. There we go, we've got our first image of someone holding their hands up in front of a camera showing that they've got gloves on. Now it looks a slightly peculiar position, but that's okay, it still shows us what we need to see. One thing to bear in mind when you're using generative AI is that it can introduce biases, either inherent in the model itself or through the prompt that you give it. So it's worth just being really careful about how you use it. You can also hallucinate, so sometimes you might end up with an image with some with three fingers or 12 fingers on each hand. So those are the sorts of things that you need to do some really careful validation of the data once you've created it to make sure that you're not introducing those biases into your then uh, classification model that we're going to create later. But this is okay. So what we can do now is use the variations tool to generate variations of a single image. So in this case, we're gonna take this image, plug it in, and we'll get back three different uh, slightly different variations of that image. Now this could be really useful if you have a small data set that is kind of of something fairly normal, but you want to get some good variation to make sure that uh, your data set performs better in a range of different scenarios. So there we go, we've got three different people, all based on this image, holding up their hands in front of the camera showing that they've got gloves on. Again, slightly peculiar, but because we're going really low resolution with the input for this, it'll be 160 by 160 probably by the time we get through to model training. The slightly peculiar kind of nature of it doesn't necessarily matter so much. So now I'm just going to generate a full data set. So I've written a little script here that takes in a list of labels with prompts and labels for each one. In this case, I'm asking it to do with, hat, with gloves and without gloves. We're going to create 10 base images with three variations per image. Just check that the output directory exists and then iterate through all of those responses. I'll just click run. That's successfully run. Now we can plot all of our output images here and I've written a little script to put them in a grid. 
There we go. You can see we've got a load of different images of people holding their hands up to a webcam with gloves and no gloves. So the next step is you can upload these images to an Edge Impulse project and develop a classification, image classification model, which will detect between hands with gloves on and hands without gloves on. But actually what I want to do here is show you something called transformation blocks. Now these are a really useful enterprise feature that we have for Edge Impulse, which allow you to upload a Docker container with some parameters which can automatically create a data pipeline. So either it can ingest your data from another platform, perform some transforms on it, and then put it straight into your project, or even it can generate data from scratch. So in this situation, I've written up a little block, which is publicly available on GitHub, which has a small uh, script called transform.py, which takes in some arguments, your prompt, your label, your images, your variations, and your size, and allows you to pipe those arguments into a data pipeline in an enterprise project. So the first thing we need to do is go down and add a secret for the API key. So that's open AI API key. Add in our secret, which I won't show you. So we've added the open API key. Now we can head back to our project and to data sources. Now in data sources, this is where we can use our transformation block that we've created, the DALI image generator, enter our prompt, enter our label, enter the images we want to create, let's do 10, and the variations too. And I'm gonna leave the, num the image size as standard. So we'll click set up actions. We won't recreate the Data Explorer yet because we're going to add another one for our second label. No gloves for this label. Then we will recreate the Data Explorer after that one. So now all we need to do is run these pipelines. We collapse these down. We should be able to go into the container logs and see the pipeline in action. So there we go, we managed to create our first set and it's uploaded all of our files to the platform. And the same has happened for the second set. So we should be able to go over into data acquisition now and see that we've got 120 items in our um, demo. So there we go, 60 gloves, 60 no gloves. All slightly peculiar, but working as expected. We can go into our impulse design now. I'm going to choose an image width of 160 by 160, and we'll see why in a second. Add our processing block. And we're going to use transfer learning for images here because it works well even on small data sets. We'll save the impulse, go into the image, generate our RGB raw features. Generated our features, now we can use the transfer learning model to, and we're going to choose a different model, we're going to choose mobile net uh, 160 by 160. And we'll use 1.0. The model's trained now, we've got fairly good separation between gloves and no gloves, so I'm just going to go over to deployment <coughs> and deploy it to my computer, see if we can run this directly. On device. I've got some gloves here ready to try it out with. I've got no gloves there and let's see what happens when I put my gloves on. Gloves! Hey look at that! No gloves and some gloves! Haha! <laughs> So there we go, I've taken you through a little example there of using the DALI OpenAI API to generate images for a synthetic data set completely from scratch. And we managed to create a model which works for detecting whether or not you've got gloves on uh, from a webcam. And now this is a small example, but it has some really powerful um, potential applications for lots of different things. Like I've said with all of these synthetic data tutorials, 
the reason why you might want to create synthetic data is if you perhaps don't have access to the end environment where you want to collect your edge data from, or collecting that data is really expensive, or you want to create a proof of concept before you go and commit all of the resources to get that edge data. It can also be useful, this kind of tool, to augment existing data sets. So if you've got a data set which is good, but it's small, we can use data set synthesis to augment that data set um, to, to make it a, a, a more representative slice of, of what you want to be recording. And the OpenAI API is really good for that because you can even feed in existing pieces of um, data and crop out areas where you want it to generate uh, new data. So I hope that was interesting. And once again, that's available as a notebook in our Python notebooks repository or as a transformation block, which can integrate into your enterprise straight away. So just click those links in the description to learn more. And I'll be back with more tutorials very soon. Thank you for listening. And I hope this has been really interesting.